Hi everyone, Emma McAdam here. Today we're going to talk about a question I got from one of my viewers and they asked, how do I turn off the freeze response? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, basically the freeze response is a survival instinct stored deep in your brain. It's an automatic response to overwhelming danger or at least the perception of danger. So when fighting your way out or running away seem impossible, the brain turns on the freeze response as a last resort. So this isn't something conscious. It's not something you plan or you choose. It's something that your deep limbic brain triggers a lot faster than thinking. And it can be really hard to break out of the freeze response. So in this video, we're going to talk about one of the things I do in session with my clients to help them work through it. Okay. So the freeze response is the third option in the fight, flight, freeze reaction to danger. Fight works when the threat seems beatable, like something smaller or less powerful than you. Flight works when you're faster or you have an advantage to escape. And freeze kicks in automatically when your brain decides that the threat is too large or too overwhelming or too strong or fast or powerful to fight off or escape. And honestly, the freeze response can be really effective. You may have seen some of these videos on YouTube or in wildlife documentaries where an animal survived because they froze, they hid, or they played dead. Now, if you've frozen up in the past, don't beat yourself up. You could just thank your brain for keeping you safe. And we can also talk about some new skills to move forward. Now, if you look at how the freeze response shows up, it can turn on in this like really big way, like freezing up in the middle of battle, or it can also turn on in really small ways. So like if you're stressed about a test, you might feel a sense of dread or a sense of overwhelm. And then you just try to avoid your homework or hide from trying to think about your studying. Our anciently evolved brain doesn't do a very good job with these modern threats that we have that are really quite different than fighting off a tiger. So things like uh, social media comments that bother you or studying for a test can really turn on that freeze response because our ancient brain doesn't necessarily know how to respond to that in, a, in an effective way. Our anciently evolved brain might turn on the freeze response in the case of a life-threatening event or just something like public speaking. So here are some of the symptoms of a freeze response. Your muscles lock up in all or in part of your body. This is called tonic immobility. And this isn't something that you can control. Your muscles literally lose the ability to move. You might feel feelings of numbness, detachment, or dissociation. And this means that you feel like separate from your thoughts. Now, this is actually a pretty functional response because if you're in the face of, you know, impending death or pain that you can't escape, then your brain has this ability to kind of separate you from those sensations and from the intensity of that. But if you're taking a test and you start dissociating, or if you're talking about trauma and you can't even connect with the room you're in, that can actually mess up your life because it's um, disconnecting you from the things that you care about. So people who feel numb or disconnected or kind of unable to uh, attach or feel joy with certain things in their life, that might be a locked in freeze response. Some of the other uh, types of symptoms of a freeze response are feeling overwhelmed or having fawning behaviors. So trying to appease someone who seems threatening or trying to make them feel good or trying to um, give in to what they're asking or demanding of you. Those can all be symptoms of a freeze response. A few more symptoms of the freeze response are a sense of stiffness or heaviness, um, holding your breath, shrinking, or trying to disappear. People often feel ashamed that they froze up in a situation, but they really shouldn't. And that's for two reasons. Number one, it wasn't in their control to do something different in the moment. And number two, freezing up might have saved your life. So for more on that, check out my video, The Freeze Response and Sexual Assault. Anyways, the freeze response can feel paralyzing because it seems to return when we remember traumatic events. I've had clients sitting in my office and they're telling me about their trauma. And this is what they look like when they say they're sitting there like, I'm so angry. I'm so mad. This guy should be in jail. And they're sitting in my office 
frozen stiff. They're not moving. They're saying, I'm so angry. They're, they're saying, I'm so angry, but what their body is saying is, I'm still powerless. I'm still in danger. And our memories are stored as much in our bodies as they are in our minds. So when we think about danger or we think about trauma or we watch the news about coronavirus, our brain can't tell the difference between actual dangers and these imaginary or perceived dangers, things, danger that we're thinking about or remembering. So it turns on that exact same response, that freeze response in our nervous system. Whether we're actually in danger or we're just thinking about danger, our brain turns on that fight, flight, freeze response. But when we're in the fight, flight, freeze mode, we can't process through information. So our brain just, the, the thinking part of our brain basically turns off. And so people get stuck in these cycles of reliving their trauma. Okay, I thought this was gonna be a short video. Now I'm like talking and talking, but here I go. So in order to work through these responses that leave us trapped, we can train ourselves to break out of the freeze response in a couple of ways. So the first thing I always do with my clients is I help them re-engage the body because we have this cycle, right? Your brain sends messages to your body and your body sends messages to your brain. So we re-engage the body and it sends messages to the brain that you are actually safe. And when the brain is reminded that you're actually safe, then it has the ability to process through some more information. And we plan action in a way that increases your overall sense of power. So your belief in your ability to take action in a helpful way. So, your brain that caused this reaction is not the thinking part of your brain. And I'm pointing up here because this is where your prefrontal cortex is and your cortex, and that's where the thinking part of your brain works. And you can't think your way out of a freeze response. You have to go in kind of through the back door. It's your deep survival oriented brain that's down here in the brain stem that decided to put you into freeze. So the best way to access that part of the brain is through the body. So for that reason, I almost always start with a body up approach to treating trauma and anxiety. So here's what I do with my clients in session. So we start by creating movement, right? They were sitting here and they were frozen and telling me I'm so angry. So I say, okay, do this with me. I say, pat your legs. And I have them start moving their arms. And then I say, stomp your feet. And they'll sit in there in, on the couch or wherever and they'll start stomping their feet. And I get them physically moving. So when their body's not in freeze, it can send that message to their brain that I'm safe. And then I usually have them start doing crazier things. I have them start shaking their arms out stomping, we do some dancing, we get a little crazy. And I've actually had a therapist come in from the office next to me who wasn't with my practice. She comes right into my session, in the middle of a session, and she's like, is there a therapist in here? What are you guys doing? Because she had no idea that like body work is an essential part of trauma treatment, which is unfortunate because she was an EMDR trained therapist, so I don't know why she didn't know that. But anyway, I have them wave their arms, I have them move around, and I have them break their body out of freeze. And when I see them calm down, and break out of freeze, then we can go back start to process that trauma again, both in their body and in their mind. So when we've convinced our brain through our body that we are actually safe, then we can do other things like talking about the traumatic experience while staying out of freeze, or we can practice combating that feeling of overwhelm, or we can plan some practical steps to manage certain behaviors that week. So um, these are all some things that we can do, but we can't do them when we're stuck in the freeze response. So for anyone who's stuck in the freeze response, I encourage you to start moving your body, but not in a fear-based way, in a slow and intentional way, right? So the other thing you can do to break out of the freeze response is you can do some training because if you have a good protocol, then you can override those natural freeze habits. And I talk about this in my other video on the the freeze response and sexual assault, but this includes self-defense training. And did you know that one of the most effective things people teach, like if they're, if they're teaching young girls how to avoid sexual assault, one of the most important things they teach them is just how to shout no, how to say that really loud. And once you've practiced that and practiced that and practiced that, then in the moment of uh, danger, you're able to draw upon that training and instead of freezing up, scream no at someone and that deters an attacker a lot of the time. A few other things that are helpful for breaking out of freeze are identifying your triggers and identifying your signs and symptoms. 
So you get good at noticing, sorry, I just hit my mic. So you get good at noticing what's going on in your body when you're freezing. And when you notice what your body does when you freeze, then you can also take proactive steps to ground yourself here in the present moment. And speaking of grounding, I have a whole series of videos on my grounding playlist on how to do grounding exercises, and all of those can help with the freeze response. Another thing you can do that's helpful with the freeze response is to exercise. So just any kind of physical exercise. And what exercise does is it takes your body through this natural cycle of getting excited, getting um, sympathetic arousal, which is basically your brain is turning on that excitement, the adrenaline and the flooding, which is really a very similar response to that fight, flight, freeze response. So it takes you through that cycle of alert uh, activation. And then when you're done exercising, you go back down through the cycle of calming down and the rest and digest response. So it's really healthy. A healthy nervous system is able to get both activated and relaxed. And exercise can help you go through those natural cycles. Um, another thing you can do to help with the freeze response is practice how you would like to respond. So if you freeze up in a meeting, instead of speaking up for yourself, you do role plays in front of the mirror of what you want to say and you practice saying it with uh, your therapist or your friend and you practice saying it with people who are safe and the more you practice it eventually that muscle memory and that habit is going to come back to you and you're going to get um, you're going to develop the ability to say what you want to say to your boss or whoever it is there's another thing you can do to help combat the freeze response and that's to develop the ability to envision safety so if our brain can bring to mind danger and it has that fight flight freeze response in reaction to imagined or perceived danger we can also turn on that calming response and break out a freeze by bringing to mind uh, the visualization of safety so you bring to mind things going well you remember times things worked out well and you develop um, mental resources like uh, an internal safe place. And when you're feeling a little nervous, you bring that safe place to mind and that can turn on that uh, relaxing, calming reaction. So I've made a couple videos on this. One of them is called Drawing Safety and the other one is uh, Guided Imagery. Uh, it's called, I think it's called A Safe Place. And as you do all this, you're basically developing emotional muscles. So you practice safe ways to experience anxiety and work your way through it. So these are things like um, rock climbing or using the book, do one thing every day that scares you. And basically this is just changing your rules around anxieties. If you have a rule that says it's not okay to feel anxious, then when you start to feel anxious, you're going to be more likely to lock up. So if instead your rules are, I can feel anxious and still be okay then you'll be more flexible with your decision-making and you're not going to make your anxiety worse. Now with any trauma work or anxiety work, you're really best off working with an experienced therapist. Um, someone trained in trauma work or in somatic experiencing or EMDR may have the skills to help you. I really believe that real growth and healing is possible. And I hope you can give yourself a little credit today for taking the time to improve yourself by watching this video. Thank you. And also please share this video because statistically one in five of your friends has experienced trauma and this might help them. So thank you so much. Take care and we'll see you next week.